So welcome everyone for the second day of the conference for Remix Comics. Um, feel very, very welcome. It's Friday afternoon. Uh, I'm happy that you all came and uh, for the for the lectures and for the roundtable conversations. Um, it's the second day, and the Remix Comics collectively talked yesterday already about the aims of the Remix Comics uh, project, and we, we we want to connect communities. We want to work with communities, support communities, so that's also why the title of the conference is Comics and Community. Yesterday we learned a lot about the power of comics from uh, Paul Gravette, and uh, I hope that most of the things you learned yesterday are still here uh, with you, and maybe you can connect it with the themes of today. Today we will talk more also about collectives that we are interested in, and also what we can learn from these collectives. But besides that, we're also trying to find synergies with other types of art or other genres. And um, I'm very happy that we will have uh, first to talk about Art Bru, which is overlapping with comics. And then Mazen Kerbay will also talk about music and how music and comics are similar or different, or they can also overlap in different ways. Um, just for you to know, this is the program. It's a little bit more than yesterday. Yesterday, we had a, one lecture and some questions. Uh, today we have two presentations, lectures, whatever you call it, and then we have a roundtable conversations. For the roundtable conversation, I really invite all the members of the audience also to participate because talking about collectives, just sitting here as if we're the United Nations and that you're not uh, part of it, I think that's not the way how we should talk about collectives. So please feel invited to join the, the conversation. But we first, we'll have the first lecture by, uh, by Erin Dejas. I'm very happy that he's here with us. Uh, he's a comic scholar. We have comics artists, we have comics uh, uh, publishers, we have uh, comics uh, readers, but we have a comic scholar. So Erin Dejas is a comic scholar from Belgium. He's affiliated with the Free University of Brussels and a lecturer at the University of Liège and the School of Art Saint-Luc in Brussels. Um, coming from the Netherlands, uh, our first uh, in the desert of comic, uh, uh, which is the Netherlands, the first uh, oasis for comics is actually Belgium. So for me, it's very nice to have a guest from, uh, from Belgium. Maybe you have a different uh, opinion about that, but for me, this means a lot. Um, Paul Dejas published in French and Spanish about Maurice Franquin, Peyo as well, and he did a PhD about Munoz and uh, Sampaio. And his current research focuses on Art Bru and, uh, and punk comics. This was also a reason why Stripburger wanted to inv well, invite him for the, for the conference. Um, because Art Bru or any unclassifiable work outside the common artistic environment um, always have been a great source for comics writers uh, as well, for punk musicians. And um, well, the question is what can we learn from the Art Bru as, as comics scholars or readers? And uh, what does it teach us about the mainstream and the margins as we are uh, focused on the margins? So please uh, give an applause for Erin Dejas. Oh, thank you, Guido. Uh, thank you for the applause. Uh, so I have to do a, a good lecture because you have already applauded. Uh, which kind of, which is a pressure. Uh, well, um, uh, I stop with stupid jokes. Uh, oh yeah. Um, so, yeah. Let's begin with the with the beginning. Uh, well, uh, the Sex Pistols uh, were probably not the very first punk band. Uh, although they were the very first punk band to reach an important audience. Uh, if the Pistol were not the first punk band, they clearly mark the mediatic birth of the punk movement. So, um, their first gigs uh, were uh, very often described as an incredible shock for a whole generation of very young musicians, uh, totally, uh, totally puzzled by their destructive, powerful energy. Um, okay, uh, where it is? Uh, okay, voilà. uh, 
Yeah. Uh, François Keen states, what seems then so unbearable is not so much how they ostensibly insult and despise the public, but the radical desacralization in which they are engaged. What's the point if I can do the same, ask angrily the ones who thrive of the need to admire? So, uh, according to Keen, what's very important here, as you read it, it's, it's not the, the, the biggest provocation is uh, to be a materish, to be uh, to do something that apparently everybody is uh, capable to do. Uh, so here, what uh, François Keen is emphasizing is the, of course, the do-it-yourself philosophy that is inherent to to punk movement. At that time, rock music was dominated by stadium rock. Uh, bands like uh, Genesis or here Yes or Super Tramp, and they were uh, a real deterrent for punks. Uh, and the opposition is very clear if you compare with punk gigs, uh, at least at the very beginning. I'm not speaking about uh, later uh, when the when the Pistols reformed themselves. That's com completely different. But at the very beginning, the the opposition is very clear if you compare um, with punk gigs, where the public is very close. Uh, to the band, and uh, and they self tend be to be part of the spectator. And it seems that the the um, the public is part of the spectator uh, as much uh, as the musician. So um, we can consider punk as a way to to democratize music, uh, and also to bypass the institution. Uh, at the beginning, most of them play in small clubs uh, with uh, independent tour operator. Um, so the, the idea of do-it-yourself is not only uh, about the music itself, but all, all what surround the construction of the music. Um, well, um, so punk had a huge influence, of course, on music. Everybody knows that. But also, uh, for example, in literature, in movie, poetry, visual art or fashion. Uh, here are a few examples, uh, like uh, movie maker Garidu Kouichi, or uh, poet, uh, poet Katie Aker, or visual artist Raymond Petitbon, or even uh, um, fashion artist Vivian Westwood. Well, uh, what's the point with comics? But the, the influence of punk on comics is also very huge and perhaps has not been enough emphasized. Uh, US uh, comics artist Gary Panther, uh, who's often cited as, uh, as the full embodiment of the punk into comics, uh, states, he explained how he, he began to do uh, the kind of stuff uh, he will be famous for. Uh, punk was really an art movement for the rigid the, sorry, <laughs> the rejected kids, the nerds rule at that point, and I thought, I can't really fit into that, I can't relay on that. So at the end of the 70s, beginning of the 80s, the influence of punk in comics is everywhere to be seen. Uh, I, I will just present a few artists, uh, of course there are a lot more, and what's also very interesting is that you can see that nearly everywhere in the world, I'm sure that among you, you, you know maybe comi Serbian comics artists or, or Slovenian uh, comics artists of that period that I, I'm not aware of. Uh, I, I just present a few. Uh, I was uh, already talking about uh, Gary Panto, who's famous for this character of uh, Jimbo. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, here a detail, another one. Uh, in Japan, uh, we have here Teruiko Yumura, who mainly sign uh, uh, King Terry. Uh, yeah, here a detail. It's worth to, to show details of such a, such a page. Uh, I will comment it a little bit later. Or uh, if we are in France, uh, the Bazooka Collective. Uh, oh no, that's already Yumura. Yumura. Um, or, uh, yeah. I uh, should have removed the legend. It has nothing to do. It's very awful. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Or a member of the famous Bazooka Collective. Guido was talking about collective, so uh, punk were all. So in the case of Bazooka, there were, uh, it depends on the period, but uh, between five or seven young artists uh, who uh, came from, uh, from Paris and who put this kind of, uh, of punk enters into comics. What was very uh, funny is that uh, there were um, 
that some of their publications were prohibited for minors. Uh, so you must be 18 to, to be able to read it, but some of the members at the time were 17 or 16, so they were not, they were not allowed to, to buy their own comics uh, into bookshops. Uh, so here we have Olivia Clavel. Um, so these works are uh, characterized by what uh, François Kinn again described as a prude incompetence. Uh, Pang is driven by the complete rejection of virtuosity the rejection, the rejection of the know-how. I don't know. I, in France, I, in French, I was thinking about savoir-faire. It was difficult to. I, I'm not sure that no is the exact uh, synonyms. Uh, I don't know, Paul. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> uh, so everything has, that has to be to the technique, with the work, with uh, what you learn, or a perspective uh, during um, drawing. Uh, I don't know, a hand that, is, uh, that looks like Leonardo da Vinci, for example. That's all this, uh, this Barnum that, uh, that most of uh, punk artists want to throw away. So um, we have a creation that translates in the field of comics, feature that you can find in punk music. Uh, so the, the, this, uh, this rejection of the unknown, this, this amateurish, uh, this... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, deliberately amateurish uh, work, uh, or at least they seem amateurish, we can discuss about that later. Uh, so w one characteristic I see is uh, these are what you can say with, um, with caption, bad drawing, that, that seems astly made, uh, like you see here in, uh, in Gary Panther, or uh, also, a sharky narrative construction. If you will look at uh, here, Olivia Clavel, uh, we have uh, an encounter between Tintin, uh, Tintin's character, Professor Tournesol uh, from Hergé, and he's uh, meeting uh, Clavel, an uh, iconic hero who's called TV. He's a, a guy with a, with a TV um, in place of his head. And uh, there is also the men, it is also mentioned uh, here the, um, the trial of, um, of a Soviet dissident, but it's put in the middle of the narration. We don't exactly see what is the relation between this trial who was really in the, in the, um, in the news at that time and that uh, you, you see directly that she was, uh, uh, no, I, maybe I have to go back. Uh, yeah, here. Uh, you see the, his head there, and it was, uh, it was taken from a photograph from the press. So here it's even, I, I say, a bad drawing that seems astly made. Here it's even not drawing, it's just taking an existing image and patching it on the page. And uh, uh, regarding the narration, it's, it's nearly impossible to explain clearly what this page is really about. Um, So, bad drawing, sharky narrative construction, dumb fictional argument. Could you imagine a more basic topic than the story of a constipated man who finally managed to shit? For example, that's a typical uh, punk uh, topic. Uh, even uh, the way the objects are made rejected the idea of sophistication, the idea of know who. Here we have uh, pre Bart Simpson, uh, Matt Groening, and uh, the founder of uh, Bart Simpson, of uh, the Simpson family. Before that, he made a lot of, of zin like that. You, maybe you recognize the style. So he was very involved with Panther into the, the West Coast uh, punk uh, scene at the end of the 70s, beginning of the 80s. So uh, it's sure that, fan, that zines exist long before punk came to light, uh, but I, I think it is found there uh, is, um, is favorite medium. Mm, fanzine epitomized the, the do-it-yourself philosophy. Okay, um, I would like to synthesize a little bit all this characteristic, and I would state, if I, if I can summarize that, that um, Punk is driven by, the, by the, what I would call the childhood drive. Uh, punk are acting like children, uh, like little, uh, like uh, maybe like unmaturated uh, adolescent without thinking about the social consequence of what they do. 
Um, so let's go back to music and um, rock music mainly uh, is inseparable with uh, visual creation uh, as the need of visual artists to design the record sleeve, uh, posters, leaflet for concert, even t-shirts. Um, you cannot think about rock music and also punk. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, also, uh, you, 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 can not uh, you, you cannot separate completely the music with, uh, with uh, all that uh, graphic design of all, all that visual stuff that are... are and, and I'm thinking that uh, young people that today discover, uh, I don't know, The Clash or, um, or The Sex Pistols with, uh, with um, uh, this... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, with um, oh shit um, <laughs> the the um, Spotify yeah thank you Guido <laughs> and they they mainly wouldn't see the the sleeve wouldn't see the poster are not able to read the credits know who has done what uh, sometimes and what you can remark already here but there is a, a lot of uh, of punk uh, records where you have comics. Uh, here is uh, one of them, um, uh, made by Jimmy Raid, so that's the one, uh, I don't know if, no. Uh, he's also the one who did the famous iconic uh, sleeve of the very fur and, and only uh, LP of the pistols. But he made also uh, that uh, record sleeve. Um, and uh, yeah, w one important thing, uh, yeah, uh, Jimmy Red, who, who sadly passed away a few weeks ago. Um, and of course, in the case of punk, so they look for, uh, um, for the idea of, of, um, of having all this visual uh, stuff that, uh, that come with the music. And it was fundamental, of course, to adopt an aesthetic that embody a break that should be as radical as the music, of course. Uh, so uh, Raid made this sleeve for, uh, for the single Holiday in the Sun, and in fact he reused a commercial uh, comics for tourism in Belgium, and he mixed the images and replaced the text in the balloon uh, by the lyrics of the song. So here, um, for example, yeah, here is the original one. The little girl said, Belgium has everything a young girl could ask for. And uh, after that, he has mixed the image. And here, I don't want a holiday in the sun. I want to go to a new Belsen. Uh, maybe you know that Belsen was a Nazi concentration camp, but not Belgium, but Belsen. Uh, or uh, even the boy says, and I'm happy as a sand boy on Ostend Golden Beach. I think it's between us, but uh, the Belgium uh, sea coast is the most horrible in the world. Where we're, everywhere we're buildings. Oh. Okay, I have to see that. <laughs> That's better in, in the Netherlands when you say that. Uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, so here the boy says, uh, I'm as happy as a sand boy on a stand golden beach. And here it says, uh, I want to see some history because I got a reasonable economy. Um, well, another example also uh, came in from the from the Sex Pistols, a promotional poster signed by, by an artist I don't know nothing about. Uh, I would like to, to church a little bit. Uh, it was called the Mark J. Uh, and um, he used a graphic style that maybe, uh, I don't know if Paul Gravett will, uh, will agree with that, but it, it looks a little bit like the style of famous uh, popular UK Children Weekly, the Beano. Um, and sometimes when, when, when you look at that, um, I, I would say that it's a bit like what a child would have done by copying his or her uh, children's book. I, I'm sure, as myself, that all of you have done that during uh, your childhood. You try to, to redraw Tata, Mickey Mouse, uh, uh, Condorito, what you want. And uh, often, uh, I, I think uh, this... Um, this uh, punk comics um, gives that, that kind of feeling. Uh, the use also of colored pencil, uh, and also the, the fact that the page is, is finished, unfinished uh, refers also to, to the amateurish and childish aspect of the work. 
Um, and also, uh, like I told you with uh, Olivier, uh, Olivier Clavel, uh, many punk creation reels comics character, but they are often children mainstream character, like here, uh, Professor Tournesol, or here you have uh, uh, Yumura on interpretation of, um, of Tezuka's Astro Boy. Uh, but uh, there are lots of examples, and you see everywhere in every uh, culture, uh, there is this, this kind of reusing or recycling the icon of, um, of uh, children popular uh, comics. Okay. Um, one question, why have comics become a prime medium for prank creator? Well, it's an hypothesis, uh, but we can say that throughout history, comics has been violently uh, attacked by educator, by parents association, by politician, and other guardians of the, let's say, guardians of the temple. Uh, if you see in different countries, for example, in France, there was a, a strong censorship after World War II. In the U.S., maybe you have heard about the Comics Code, who, who was also a kind of uh, self-censoring uh, the comic book. And you have an example in different parts of the world. Um, and so comics has often been considered as the lowest level of literature. Uh, that said, I think that even today, I would say, okay, it's not the same as after World War II. Uh, one good example is that we are talking here about comics and it's financed by the European Council. So, okay, things have changed, of course. Um, but I, I think that uh, comics uh, still smell of, of, um, of sulfur. Uh, I'm particularly struck by the use of expressions such as graphic novel, uh, graphic literature, graphic narrative, so I, I will not say that graphic novel is not a pertinent concept, but I, I simplify it a, a bit. I think that it's often used to not use comics. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I don't know, one of you, uh, you talk with somebody, ah, you are doing comics. Uh, hmm, well, um, I'm not really in comics. Uh, I prefer to name that uh, graphic narrative. Uh, so this implied uh, I, I'm not uh, involved into the, this idiot childish stuff you are thinking about. Uh, sometimes I think the expression is, is now a, a little bit disappeared, but during a long time we speak about adult comics. Uh, it's interesting uh, because you will never hear it, I do adult literature. What kind of liter adult literature? Adult paintings. Uh, and when it's necessary to, to precise adult comics, it means that a priori, comics are for children, if you have to precise that it's adult. It's just like if you are a girl and you are playing football, you are playing football, women football. Ah, okay, that means that a priori football is something for the boys. Okay, so, so that's more or less the idea. Uh, it, it's clear that the, um, the, the cultural recognition of comics is not the same as it was, uh, for example, 50 years ago, but I, I, I think that there is still an ambiguity, and, um, and I think the, the, the way that, for example, comics is often uh, replaced by, uh, I, I, for example, if, uh, if I have to apply for a, a subvention, um, discuss, discussing with, uh, with colleagues from the university, they say, okay, put maybe graphic narrative that would be better for, for the, the jury. So, even if we say, okay, today comics has reached this peak of recognition, I, I think there is still um, this sort of ambiguity. So, because of their low uh, cultural status and because of their association with childhood, comics have, have kept a very strong, I, I think, subversive power. Uh, when you are doing comics, you are the one that nobody is listening to. You are like a children, you know. Uh, you stay under the radar, but because of that, you are much more free to point out, to point out what could be seen as disturbing. Um, I think that by using comics, uh, punk artists are like the, the child in this famous uh, Hans Christian Andersen uh, Forte, The Emperor's New Clothes, where you have two crooks. Uh, who make the who would say to the emperor, okay, we will make you magnificent clothes, but be aware that they are invisible to to who are stupid or incompetent. And in fact, 
the, the emperor is completely naked and the only people who, who could say that the emperor is naked is a child. So I, I think that maybe it's the, 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 the idea of punk and the idea of punk recycling uh, this kind of, let's say, low art is also a way, a kind of strategy uh, to, uh, to say that the emperor is naked. Okay, uh, I, I go... Um, so, I go in a completely different direction uh, with uh, what we call art brut. I will come back to punk uh, later. So we will leave punk for, uh, for a moment and uh, reach it at the very end of that um, lecture. Uh, what is art brut? Uh, it's a concept uh, imagined by a French painter and wine merchant, uh, Jean Dubuffet. Um, so, just after the end of World War II, um, Dubuffet was terribly disappointed by uh, the visual art of his time. He was disappointed by academic works, but also by the avant-garde. Dubuffet decides to make uh, travel uh, in order to find works that have kept, let's say, a sort of authenticity. Uh, the kind of works that are not possible to find in the galleries or in the museum at that time. Uh, works that, according to him, uh, um, yeah, the, oh, oh, sorry, uh, the, the works that you can see, get you, well, yeah. <laughs> he says that the, the work that you can see in galleries or in museum uh, have lost uh, this kind of authenticity. Uh, so he went to psychiatric hospitals, prisons, uh, he met people uh, living in solitude without any cultural background, uh, people living in a small village uh, with no, nearly no social contact, meeting and discovering that, for example, he is painting the wall of uh, his little house. Um, so Arbrut is very difficult to, to define precisely, and if I begin to, to try, we have two or three hours, so that's very... Uh, but um, also he has written um, about 10 definitions. I mentioned here the most famous one. Uh, we can discuss, it's not very precise, but I think that with that sentence we can or already, how to say, circle a little bit what he's talking about. Uh, so art brut are works produced by a person and cast with artistic culture. Uh, well, um, so, what's the relation with comics? Since some 10, 15 years, uh, I see more and more comics artists who, are, who claim their great interest for Art Brut. Um, one simple thing is to, to go on uh, Facebook or on uh, Instagram to see what many uh, comics artists post. It's often that uh, they will show uh, Art Brut works it seems that the culture the, uh, that is talking to them, um, and um, yeah, the, and some of the, these comics artists also uh, share the same reference uh, from one. Many come from uh, Arbrit. I, I will show uh, a few examples. Uh, no, sorry, uh, here are a few sentences coming from a famous uh, contemporary comics artist, like for example Dominique Goblet. Uh, who says, I've always loved Art Brut. It comes from the gut, just like my own work. Um, Olivier Josso, Amel, say, I'm not kidding when I say I'm blown away by children drawing the so-called Art Brut, Art Singulier, or any elementary trace thrown with force, conviction, and spontaneity. Uh, I don't know if he's still thinking in the same, but... Paquito Bolino states in 1999, the moment I met the Arbrut people, it gave me a bit of a buzz and it changed the clock in my head a little bit. A big bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I'm not sure that uh, because he, he chose the name Le, Le, Le Dernier Cri de Scientology Hôpital Brut, uh, I suppose it's no coincidence. Uh, maybe uh, in the discussion uh, Paquito will take. Uh, about that later. Um, what have this kind of work in common with uh, comics? And I, I, I see at least two things. 
Uh, and I, I will take example from, um, from uh, yeah, I show it to you. That's the, the catalog of an exhibition that took place uh, last year between September 2022 and uh, February 23. But that will be shown again last year in, uh, in Ghent, in Belgium, if you are interested. And uh, so, uh, so I choose a few examples from, uh, from that exhibition that I have curated. There were 33 uh, artists. I will show a, a few of them. Um, like here, Oscar Foll. Oscar Foll was, um, was a tailor who drew pages like this uh, during the 20s. Uh, he made, um, uh, he takes sketchbooks and uh, with uh, full of this kind of history without uh, works, without, uh, <laughs> without words, sorry. Um, Another the famous example, maybe is the, the most famous one, Henry Darger, who was one of the very classics of uh, Arbrut, uh, who was a janitor, uh, was a very uh, poor life, he was a janitor in a hospital, and a few, a few weeks before, before uh, his dead, uh, his neighbor, who was a photograph, who was an artist, uh, discovered hundred, I, don't, I, I think it's 40,000 pages of a story, uh, and also a lot of big drawing, uh, this kind of, uh, of drawing uh, that could be seen as um, a sort of expansion of the daily strips that you can find in US press at that time. Yeah, it was from, uh, yeah, I, I forgot to say that, that uh, Oscar Foll came from Germany and uh, um, Dodger was, came from the US, from uh, Chicago. He worked uh, as a janitor in... Um, in an hospital there, uh, and he took his inspiration from uh, from comics, uh, mainly uh, one comics was very famous at that time, Little uh, Little Annie Rooney, who's uh, the story of a little orphan uh, that she she redraw, he redraw and put in his drawing. So uh, yeah, another example uh, here with a Serbian artist uh, called Wojislav Jakic. Um, he was the, the son of uh, an Orthodox preacher, uh, so his very first work was to, to draw the portraits of the, of the dead in the cemetery of his village, and he made a lot of very strange composition, like, like that one. Uh, yeah, here uh, you have um, uh, Luigi Brunetti. Um, it's a, it's a work that maybe if you, you are aware of, um, of very um, contemporary tend, uh, tendencies in, uh, in comics, like abstract comics, for example, it's what's still quite marginalized uh, part of comics, but it's a tendency that has uh, emerged uh, some 15 years ago. Uh, and if you compare to, to this kind of works, uh, there are uh, very much similarity. Um, in fact, that's not really an abstract work. Um, Brunetti was a very poor guy, he wanted to be a priest uh, and there was um, a covent uh, next to the village where he was living uh, but um, the responsible of the covent for, for that he, he didn't have the, he was not intelligent enough, he, he didn't have the intellectual capacity to be a priest uh, but he was, um, uh, he, he was hosted in this covent and um, when he, he was doing little works uh, like uh, uh, working in the garden and so on, but uh, when he had time, he, he redraw uh, some uh, magazines with nothing to do with comics. Uh, Scola, I, I, I don't know, I'm not speaking Italian, but uh, it means the Catholic life. And so there were a lot of landscapes of um, photographs of church and so on, and he redraw and reinterpret them. Uh, putting also text, I, I, I don't think he was able to read, but he, he redraw uh, the text and sometimes he mix, when you, you read it, that, you see that the, 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 the legend that must be uh, under a photograph is, is not at the good, let's say, the good place in his drawing. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, another one, uh, a bit more abstract. Uh, or um, a Dutch artist, uh, Karl Franz Trent, is born in, in uh, 1921, he probably died, uh, but uh, I, I'm I would be very interesting to have more information about him. Uh, but this guy was, uh, was kept in a psychiatric hospital during the, the 60s. He was freed at, at the end of the 60s when the... Um, 
uh, when um, the Netherlands began, began to to use uh, another way, look at psychiatry differently with the the, the come of the anti-psychiatry, among other. And uh, uh, Drenthe, uh, his plan was to, to write a book made with image and text. What's very interesting is that he's, he explained, because there, there, there is a, one poetry magazine where there is a text by him, I, I don't know how they get in contact with him, uh, where he explained that, well, I'm not an artist, but it's urgent to, to, to express these things. And he was... Uh, he, he wanted to stand up against the, the abuse in uh, psychiatric hospitals. And he wanted to make a book in six languages. So he had imagined the cover in a different language. Uh, so here you have, uh, you have drawing. Here you have the visit of um, Santa Claus, for example. It's, it's often uh, very, um, very comic, and, uh, but it's... It's always this, uh, okay, you laugh a, bit, a little bit, but there is always something dark in the background. Uh, here you see the, the, the bad treatment that um, the people receive. And I, I like very much that, that drawing, which is a collage. Uh, it's, uh, it's Drenthe himself. Uh, so he made a photograph of himself and he put it on, uh, on the drawings. Well... Um, yeah, per perfect. Um, so, Arbrut and uh, alternative comics. Um, well, the, the 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 comics artist I mentioned, uh, I mentioned like Paquito Bolino, Dominique Goblet, or Olivier Josuamel, are key actor of a generation that emerged at the year, in the year 1990. Uh, that were uh, very disappointed about how comics developed at the end of the 80s was uh, at that time uh, mainly in, uh, in the French market or French-speaking Belgian French market. You have to make series. Uh, all the book must have the same size, must be in colored, uh, self layout, self number of pages, um, more or less the same same style, and you have to use a genre to make. Um, uh, a kind of uh, uh, detective comics or uh, science fiction comics or cyberpunk com uh, comics or uh, post-apocalypse comics. The, the, the publisher were very interested in putting all this work in, uh, in little boxes. Uh, and uh, the mainstream uh, publisher at that time, at the end of the 90s, nearly reject anything that could not enter into this category. In contrast, alternative comics creator and publisher, as I have formally claimed it, uh, are characterized by a, what I would say a quest for new affordance of comics. Uh, and just as Paul Gravett emphasized it yesterday, uh, he emphasized the, the great flexibility of comics. Uh, so I, I have really no idea if, um, for example, Luigi Brunetti or uh, Wojislav Jakic uh, did want to make comics. Um, in some case, uh, there are some uh, works from Arbrut where you, you see that clearly they are influenced by that. Here you don't know exactly uh, if it's, um, how to say that, um, if there is an influence or if they, uh, they, they reuse without knowing similar devices. Um, but they offer great alternative opportunities for comics artists. Um, so if we have to admit that alternative comics publishers are characterized by a quest for a new affordment, uh, it is worth saying that all these works offer unprecedented solution in terms of, of themes, narrative, structural, or graphic styles. Uh, I didn't finish my, my uh, sentence, but uh, Paul said yesterday that there is a great flexibility in comics. I think that these work that we can label comics or not, but they, they are also very flexible in using a uh, comics device. So let's go back to punk, finally. The time when alternative comics publisher emerge can be compared very much to the mid-70s when punk music emerged with a new industry of music that was dominated by Virtuosity and Stadium Rock Band. Alternative comics are not just reminiscence of punk, 
but I think that nearly all of them uh, have put punk as a reference. Maybe it's not the only reference, maybe it's not the major one, but it's one reference with the idea of bypassing the institution and in their case, bypassing the normalization of mainstream comics industry. In came of the mentioned author, uh, Bolino, Goblet, or Josso Amel, they all claim, and they are not the only one, uh, for a punk heritage. As we consider the philosophy or maybe the ethic of do it yourself, it's a fundamental, punk is a fundamental landmark. Why are Arbrut, uh, so, so why are Arbrut, uh, has influenced so much uh, alternative uh, comics artists, having escaped from the conditioning and the normalization of our brut creation, sorry, having escaped from the conditioning and the normalization, our brut creation embodied better than any other object, I think, the do-it-yourself ethics that drives punk movement. Thank you. This feels a little bit like some exam or something. But, uh, what I like so much about the childhood, you were talking about childhood creativity, and now we have babies in the audience, right? That's, that's, <laughs> the, that's the best uh, example, actually. Um, uh, besides capitalism, time is our biggest enemy. Uh, we, um, we don't have much time to uh, have questions. I have dozens of questions. Thank you very much for this wonderful uh, talk. Uh, I don't know where to start, but I'm not going to start because you have been listening all the time. So let's do uh, one or two questions, depending on how long they are. Um, anyone? Okay. <laughs> I have many questions. I don't know where to start. Well, maybe, maybe very briefly, um, uh, you said as a scholar of comics, you also have to deal with the fact that there's a low recognition of mm -hmm. comics in, in, in the university. It's like an established institution. Um, you already gave us some hints, but how do you cope with this, uh, this fight for comics in academia? Uh, I, I think the best thing is, is not uh, excuse yourself for showing comics. Uh, yeah, at the very beginning, uh, in the beginning of the year 2000, when I, I gave the very first courses of, uh, uh, about comics history, for example, I, I, was, I made for an introduction where I explained that it's um, a kind of art that, uh, where the recognition failed, and at the time that was more true than today, uh, for example, what you, how, how they describe comics in a daily, for example, comparing to movies or literature. Today, I, I was thinking that uh, comics was too late, but in fact, it was uh, earlier, because today, the chronic about comics in daily are very, are completely horrible, but even the chronic about literature or movie are also be, has also become very bad, I think. Most of them, there are exceptions, of course. Uh, but uh, finally, I, I thought I, I will remove that introduction where I explain why uh, about the statues of comics. I, I finally, mostly for the, for the course about uh, comics history, I thought, okay, I will show the works explain what they do, what you, how you can, what you can find them, how they are influenced and so on. And if it's, there is somebody in the, um, in the room when I, I show, I don't know, Munoz of Sampaio or Hergé or Esa Mutezuka or uh, Dominique Goblet, for example, who say, oh, that's this shit of comics. Okay, it's your, if you want to think about that, but I think that when you work, show the work, if, there, if they are still uh, not uh, convinced it's something that is valuable. Um, I, I don't think there is any, anything more to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the, that's the end of it. Um, no, yes, yes, oh, there they are. <laughs> thank you. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I'm Ingeri Aula from, from Finland, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher in okay. visual communication nice design. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and an anthropologist, but now I'm just getting into the comics research. So this kind of the academic and scholarly 
questions are so so interesting to me. So can you say what is, what do you think what has changed in comics research during these past yeah, 20 uh, years and what's the most important change? Yeah, it change? has changed a lot. That's that's true. Um, yeah, I, I gave my, my very first course, I, I think it was in, in 2000, 2001, something like that. Uh, what has changed? Uh, it's clear that uh, nobody will say to you now, uh, okay, that's just only comics. Uh, I hear it uh, at the beginning of the year 2000 sometimes. They didn't say that in front of me, but I hear by a colleague, he say, okay, why, why having a course about comics in the university? I'm not against, but... Uh, and um, I think what has changed is not that the comics that are published now are better than 20 years ago, uh, but you have uh, works like, uh, I would say, uh, Jimmy Corrigan, uh, L'Ascension du Homal by David B. or these works are sort of, uh, how to say that, um, uh, the world in English, uh, in French we say uh, the prescripteur, they are prescriptive. And so the, they are, I don't think that Chris Ware is better than, uh, let's say, uh, Franquin, for example, uh, but it has everything that, that could cope with, a, uh, with um, cultural recognition, or like, uh, like Mauss, for example, you have, a great, you have a great argument about World War II, uh, Jews' uh, uh, extermination, you have, uh, you have some, and you have also a work that uh, uh, renewed completely the... Um, the device of comics. So, so that has changed, but I think that the, the change came uh, mostly from uh, the student, the after that, uh, became a researcher. Uh, and it, it was clear that uh, they were, uh, uh, for them, for that generation, not mine, or that half generation after me, it was very clear that we, we don't have to excuse yourself if you, if you speak about comics. That, w that was very different. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of differences. Uh, yeah, we have, no, we have, you have course about that, you have researchers about that, you have many PhD, uh, maybe, uh, I would be interesting to see how much they are if you compare with other medium, I, I think we'll be surprised. Uh, but at the other end is that they are not so much, uh, how to say that, um, uh, structure that, that are heavy enough to stay. Uh, to, to have a structure that will uh, study or give course to comics and that will stay 10, 20 years and that w people will think, okay, if the teacher uh, is out of work, we will replace it. It's only very fragile how it is. Also, and that has nothing to do with comics, but it's more the system of today. Of you, you have always to find money back to, to pay and to renew all the things. And so that's a problem that comics came very late uh, with the l very late uh, car of the train and that's a, yeah, that's a problem. Okay, thanks. Um, we have time for one short question and a short answer. <laughs> okay. Sorry uh, for the pressure. I hope it will be short. Um, I just wanted to ask you since there's been a debate in Slovenia for quite some years now and right we're in the moment where some people are actually going to write a comic uh, dictionary uh, yeah. in Slovene language. But there is quite a few interesting things. People sometimes don't know whether to say something is a picture book or whether something is a comic. But I noticed some panels here that yeah. uh, I would maybe consider consider more uh, of a picture book. For mm -hmm. example, the one uh, in the psychiatric uh, uh, institution. Yeah. Uh, and I was just wondering where maybe it's just that in Slovenia we understand that in different directions or how come you, for example, choose to put this also in your presentation and whether you consider this a comic? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I've simplified it a bit. But uh, when, I, when we organized that exhibition, the idea was... I, I don't think that the question if these work are comics or not, I, I don't think it's particularly important. It's clear that there are works that, you, that can cope with the, with the narrowest uh, definition you can find of comics. You have captions, you have image, and so on. And uh, of course, if you, you have here uh, Drent or, or Brunetti, for example, it's not so, so, so clear. At the other end, if you look at what mainly what the, um, the alternative publisher has done since 30 years, if you publish that 
in a book and it's just published. Uh, I have most, mostly a uh, French speaking reference, but Frémoc, for example, could clearly publish this kind of work in his collection of comics. And it is seen. So, so you have, um, it's the idea that comics is, let's say, a language with some device that can vary. Uh, and at the other end, it's also a cultural practice. And it's something that is moving all the time. So every time you see something different that come in comics, for example, abstraction, then you have to reread the whole history of narrative image and look back and you will think that maybe uh, what uh, Henri Michaud did with uh, Little Patches is very similar to, to what Levi Trondheim did with, uh, with his abstract comics, for example. Mm. So it's the idea of, uh, but I, 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 okay, we, we, we know that Tintin is a comics, for example, that Superman is a comics. You can surround it, but there is no, no frontier, there is no circle that, you, that is very clear. You, you have things that are on the side, and I think it's okay. Okay. At the beginning, you were not sure if whether you deserved an applause, but now I think you, uh, okay. you can uh, have you. that applause. <laughs> Thank you very much.